In our long history, Thailand has been a happy and wealthy nation. From time to time, the Thai nation has faced danger from beyond its borders. But because of our unity and courage in the dark hours, we have come through safely. But now a new peril greater than ever before faces the Thai nation. This peril is the aggression of communism. The motion picture you are about to see shows a brief history of the communist aggression, the misery it has brought to the people, the enslavement contrasted with the blessings of Thai life. You will then understand why we must resist communism. Communism begins with this German named Karl Marx. 100 years ago, he created the theory of communism in one of his books. This is the book, an official copy printed in Moscow, which explains that communism is based on two main ideas that all religion is bad and that all private property is bad. Therefore, Marx said, religion must be destroyed. All private property must be seized by the state. Marx stated that all this must be done by revolution, by force, by violence. But nothing important happened with the idea of communism until 1917, when the Russian army was defeated in the First World War. The defeated soldiers were dirty and fighting amongst themselves. Everybody in Russia was discouraged and restless. This was a chance for the communists to grab power. Russian disciple of Karl Marx, the top communist leader talked fast and promised peace and food to the confused peasants and workers. But the Russian people discovered too late that communism means not peace, but more war, more aggression, and less food and comfort. Trotsky, Lenin's partner, was another rabble-rouser. This man was later murdered by agents of Stalin. Communist leaders whipped up the Russians into fury. They lost their heads, stormed the palace, the royalty. And blasted the sacred shrines. Here are the ruins of royal tradition, destroyed by communists exactly as Karl Marx preached. The revolution over, the communists controlled the country. They set up headquarters for world communism in the dreadful Kremlin. This is Stalin, who after Lenin's death seized all power into his own hands. And so from this Kremlin, the Russians have pushed communism into Asia by brute force and honeyed promises. This is the Mekong. Now we Thais face the communist menace, which comes nearer and nearer to the Mekong, our Thai border. From this building, the Kremlin, Russian communists send orders to local communists all over the world including Thai traitors to work against our independence. These orders were formally transmitted through the Communist International, known as the Comintern. During World War II, when Russia needed Allied aid, the Communists pretended to abolish the Comintern, but all they did was change the name. It is now called the Common Form, and the shadow boss still supports Thai traitors harming our country. Since World War II, the Communist International has expanded its activities. 
in Europe, countries were gobbled up quickly. This is Marsari, premier of Czechoslovakia, a small nation like Thailand. He believed in democracy and refused to bow to the communists. So, this is Marsrik's funeral. He was pushed out of a high window. Czechoslovakia, whose people didn't think it could happen, was devoured. The communists celebrated with a parade. See the picture of Stalin, a Russian carried in the communist parade. Local communists all over the world must salute Stalin, their foreign master like this. This map shows how communists supported by Russian armies took over Eastern Europe, country by country. Let's see the Russians formally and officially take over each country. First step, a train enters Moscow station. Second step, a Bulgarian traitor is greeted by a Russian officer. Third step, the Bulgarian leader signs over his people and their lives and property to Russians, their masters. Fourth step. The traitor returns home and a huge parade is staged. Why, it's Stalin, a Russian, leading a Bulgarian parade. If Thailand is ruled by communists, we will certainly have this kind of parade. Thai youth will have to carry pictures of Malenkov, Mao Zedong, and Ho Chi Minh. We don't ever want to witness such a disgraceful parade. And so Bulgaria went behind the Iron Curtain. Next, the Poles came to Moscow. Same station. Same reception, same betrayal. Poland's freedom is signed away. Like in former days, Poland once more becomes Russian property. Still more traitors. This time, Romanian communists obediently come to Moscow to sign away their country to Russians. Same room, same table, same tragedy. of the communists staged the usual parade. See the foreign faces, Russian faces. Here in Romania, they control every local leader. Never in Thai history have we carried foreign faces in our parades, and never will. Here is all the proof anybody needs that communism means Russian domination of your country. Next, Hungarian communist leaders went to Moscow and signed the same papers. On return home, the same kind of parade, the same foreign faces, Russian faces. Here he is again, clear, unmistakable proof who runs communism. And now enslaved by the new imperialism, this is how the Iron Curtain descended over Eastern Europe. From Moscow, communism has spread all the way to Southeast Asia. The shadow boss of international communism who works in the Kremlin has seized lands of many peoples not by free consent, but by secret and open aggression. This is Mekong, our border. Communist Viet Minh forces, aided by Russians and Chinese, are already close to it. But we still have time in Thailand to ask, how bad are conditions under communism? First, let us consider the life of the farmer under communism. Communist farmers are poor because they are forced into collective farms. They must turn over most of their crops to the government, leaving them very little to eat. But here in Thailand, we are better off with fish in the pond, rice in the fields. 
These same farmers were in a communist country. They would slave all day from morning to night, every month of the year without rest. And at the end, the government would take all the crop, leaving only the barest subsistence, and ship it to China or Russia where food is scarce. Our children would be starving and sad like the Russian and Chinese children today. See the happy times. We must keep our children happy and free. Next, let us consider the fate of religion under communism. Let's find out the true official position of the communist towards religion. Karl Marx said, religion is the opium of the people and must be destroyed. Here is the official text of Lenin on religion. This violently anti-religious book has never before appeared in Thailand because the communist would never dare tell the devout Thai people their innermost schemes against religion. These are genuine pictures showing what communists do when they seize a country. These pictures were taken by the communists in Spain in 1937 to boast of their victory over religion before they were driven out of that country. Here are bullets spattered walls, burned out churches, dead bodies of priests, things we don't like to believe about anyone ever doing to religion. Buddhist priests have been murdered by communists in China, Korea, Vietnam. See the irreverent communist mocking the Virgin Mary, a hat on her head, a fancy dress on her, and kicking her over. They have done this to Lord Buddha in other countries. All religious ideas are an abomination. Communism abolishes all religion and morality. Some uninformed people don't believe that communists would ever burn down a Watt or kill a priest. Here is all the proof we need. Priests are parasites in society. Only fools believe in priests. I hate all the gods. Now we Thais know the truth about communist hostility towards religion. We will protect Lord Buddha. Next, what of education under communism? Of course they have classrooms and laboratories. But the question is, what kind of education do students get? Is it education for self-improvement, to get a better job, to learn the truth? Here is the key book on communist education by Kalanin, the top communist authority. On page 131, he states, the fundamental and chief task of communist education is to render the maximum assistance in the class struggle we are waging. But King Chulalongkorn said, the purpose of education is to help men to improve themselves, to learn the truth. Our Thai schools are progressing each day. We don't want education for a class struggle, to turn people against one another. We teach cooperation to bring progress to all the people. are the products of communist education. 
They do not look peace-loving. But Thai youth are peaceful and happy. That's our idea of education. Happiness for all. We don't train children to grow up to be aggressors. Aggressors like this. Next, what a freedom of expression in communist countries. Every newspaper in communist countries is government owned. Writers must agree with the party line. People can read only government propaganda. No opposition press is allowed. But in Thailand, the press is free. Anyone can publish a newspaper. Readers get accurate foreign and local news and can read any newspapers they like. And what of justice under communism? In communist trials like this, the defendant has few rights. Communist judges mistreat the defendant, innocent and guilty alike. Even old couples live in fear in their own house. And prisoners are sent to slave labor camps for minor offenses. Fifteen million slave laborers work like animals without rights or justice. This is the Ministry of Justice in Bangkok. In our Thailand, the lowliest citizen may obtain a fair hearing. We can sue the government. We are not afraid the court will side with the government or that the government will persecute us. Next, what of voting under communism? The most laughable of all of communist pretenses is that they conduct elections. The government names the one candidate. You can only vote for him. In Thailand, however, elections are free. The opposition party may send their candidates. We have the right to vote as we please, without fear or reprisal of any kind. Next, what a freedom of movement under communism. In Russia, one has to acquire a passport to travel even to another county. But in Thailand, we travel freely. We can go abroad whenever we want. In Russia and China, people have no freedom of movement. A true Iron Curtain, no one allowed in or out except communist officials on official business. Let us see how communist aggression has come very close to our borders. Communism is not just a vague theory or philosophy. It is a new colonialism. It is a movement of ruthless foreign leaders, of invading armies, of Thai traders serving foreign masters. This is the map of Asia, China. Outer Mongolia, North Korea, Tibet, a Buddhist country, which have been seized by the Chinese communists. After years of war in China, the communists finally triumphed with the promise to give the people food, peace and happiness. These Chinese refugees look happy. When the communists seized China, they took step one. They went to Moscow. Step two, they signed the usual Russian treaty. Step three, they staged the usual parade back home. See the Russian faces so important in a Chinese parade. Russians who are foreigners have taken over the Chinese parade. Do 
we want foreigners leading Thai parades? No. North Korea was occupied by Russia in World War II. Russia set up a communist puppet regime. So once again, Kim Il-sung, the puppet premier, is called into Moscow to sign the usual Russian treaty. He had been long trained in Moscow, became and still is a Russian citizen. Back at the communist headquarters in North Korea, Stalin's picture dominates the scene. Promptly so-called peace rallies were staged at Russian direction to masquerade communist war plans. And in 1950, North Korea, by the order of the Russian masters, invaded South Korea. True documents discovered recently prove that Nam Il and other North Korean army commanders hold commissions of the Russian army and that Russian army officers planned the invasion and ran the entire war. However, our Thai volunteers were among the first to resist communism in Korea. Except for the UN and Thailand too, all Korea would have been lost. Korean refugees fled their ancestral homes never to return, but still peace is the communist slogan. Their hands tied behind them, killed without mercy by communists who were still talking about peace as they pulled the trigger on these helpless people, even little children. The only communist peace is the peace of the grave, the peace of death. And meanwhile, communists have swallowed half of neighboring Vietnam and penetrated closer to the Mekong. Communism does not mean to let Thais live in peace. It approaches closer all the time whenever there is any chance the communist would invade us too. This is Ho Chi Minh, venerated as a patriot by thousands who never realized he had been a communist for 30 years. By fighting the old colonialism, he attracted followers to help establish the new. One may ask, is Ho really a communist? The answer is that when Stalin died, Ho sent this message to Malenkov, the new leader in Moscow. Our venerated guide, our great Stalin, is no more. I solemnly take the oath to follow Comrade Malenkov more closely than ever. Soon Viet Minh troops marched into Hanoi, and their allegiance to Russia and Chinese communists was immediately clear. Foreign faces dominated every street. Pictures of Malenkov and Mao led every parade, appeared on every wall, exactly the same way the communists themselves force on every captured country. So a new colonialism has devoured our unhappy Vietnamese neighbors, 
And now we, Thai, know the full truth of the menace. The leading role in the communist attack on Thailand goes to Nai Pridi Phan Nam Yong. And in Peking, capital of communist China, Beijing中央人民广播电台 Pridi is quoted and flattered on Radio Peking. Now living in Peking, where he has stripped off the mask, revealing his true nature, a Thai traitor. Pridi Pridi是一个人民，应该对在毛泽东主席领导之下的新中国，以及在胡志明博士领导之下的越南人。and so the bosses in Moscow and Peking have found a Thai prize, a former Thai statesman who is willing to lure his own people into the communist empire. The communists have set up a so-called Thai autonomous state in Yunnan to expand to include all Thai in Laos, in Burma, and in Thailand. Of course, it will be run from Peking and Moscow. This is a trick to get Thailand to give up its independence. One may ask, why is the huge Russian and Chinese war machine so interested in little Thailand? Because we are a tempting prize, the granary of Southeast Asia. We have thousands of tons of rice for export. Free world nations buy them for a fair price. The communists want to control our rice fields, work our farmers like slaves, send away the rice crops to China and Russia. These busy ships, our many businesses, would be confiscated if Thailand went behind the iron curtain of poverty and starvation. Look at our growing prosperous industries. We don't need any communist help. We are progressing. We are modern in our own Thai ways. These are our industries. They feed us, clothe us, build our houses, give us jobs. There is food everywhere in Thailand. Nobody starves. Let's keep it that way, the Thai way. Peace dove of communist propaganda. Communist stage fake peace rallies like this. The word is peace, but the communist deed is war or infiltration. Russian arm factories supported aggression in Indochina, our neighbor. are preparing for further aggression in Asia. 
Peace publications have come even to Thailand. Here are a few genuine samples, actually written and printed in Thailand. Some of those who prefer Malankov, Mao, and Ho Chi Minh to Thailand. But in communist countries, many weapons have been made in preparation for a new communist aggression. But Lord Buddha taught that true peace is in the heart. Our priests teach us that peace is not a word. Peace is what people think and do. So let us in closing this motion picture, summarize quickly what we have seen of communist thoughts and deeds. We have seen that communism began with Karl Marx over 100 years ago. He wrote that all religion must be destroyed and that private property, like rice farms, must be seized by the state. This is the unchangeable rule of communism today. What Lenin and Stalin did what Mao and Ho Chi Minh are doing today. The official Moscow text admits all of this. We have seen that communism got its start in Russia during the chaos and confusion which followed World War I. They promised peace and food, but have brought only war and starvation to their victims. We have seen that they conquer both by arms and by subversion run by the shadow boss of the Kremlin, who gives orders to traitors in many lands, including a few Thai traitors. We have seen how free nations were tricked or overwhelmed in Eastern Europe, and our China, North Korea, and Tibet have been overcome too. We have seen how local communists go to Moscow to sign over their lords and people to the top communists, the Russians. The same room, the same table, the same tragedy each time. We have seen that the same Russian faces dominate every communist parade anywhere in the world. And we have seen that no matter how much the communists promise peace, they always bring war. War in Korea broke out in 1950 without excuse. Dead bodies, brutal killings, even little children with their hands tied behind them. But the United Nations, including Thailand, held the communists and threw them back, proving that the free world is stronger than the slave world if we all stand together. Soon communists overran North Vietnam, but now the Vietnamese face the new colonialism of communists under Ho Chi Minh, who has been a secret Moscow trained member for 20 years. And here is proof once more that communism means foreign domination. Malenkov's face, Mao's face. Here is the evidence that we Thais must see and understand because now we know that Nai Pridi is like Ho a communist tool scheming to deliver up his native land. And so we stand behind the Mekong, alert, brave, with strong friends in the free world at our side. If we do not resist the communists, future generations of Thai children will wear no smile. We shall defend our religion. We shall defend our constitution and our democracy. We shall defend our king.
We shall defend the peace of Thailand. As King Wachirawood said, whoever violates the sovereignty of Thailand shall meet with overwhelming resistance. Thai will rise as one to hurl out the invader. to stand beside us. We, Thai, shall be forever free.